Hello, I'm SQL Server MVP Lynn Langett and I'm speaking for Dun & Bradstreet. In this screencast, I'm going to go over the DNB Business Verification API and I'm going to show you how to access it programmatically. So the business problem that this API is designed to help us solve is to have a complete customer master list using a verified data set and the name of the product is Business Verification. So this Business Verification service is one method of accessing DNB's global validated reference database that has over 225 million business names, addresses, and all kinds of other information. So in accessing this API, you will produce validated and corrected company names and addresses and you'll get clean, current, and accurate company data with match statistics and confidence score and match grade out of DNB's um, custom matching algorithm. So to get an example of this, we have uh, multiple unmatched input records. And you can see on the left, they're partial. And they have different company names. One doesn't even have a company name. Uh, different uh, people working in the company. One has the title, the other two well, two have the title actually, different addresses, so on and so forth. And you'll see after running through this algorithm, the output is a complete single view of the customer with the two different versions of the company name, the PO box, the street address, the president, and other executives in the company. So it's a single validated view of a customer. You might have noticed that that last example included something called a DUNS number, and that stands for Data Universal Numbering System, and this is um, a really important part of the DNB offering. So as you can see, it started in 1962, and it's used by the U.S. government and really a lot of other businesses and government agencies and just people all over the world as a universal, unique identifier for companies doing business. So it also is used as a unique identifier via the DNB APIs to streamline your disparate data into a single customer view. So we're looking at business verification via the lens of an API or an application programming interface. So in general, a DNB API is made available via an endpoint. So specifically, it's an address, and we'll see that in the code. It's called using that URI or that address and a set of credentials, which in this case will be our login ID and our key. And I'm going to be showing uh, C Sharp with .NET in my code example. And then to run this uh, particular service, you run via exposed public methods that are documented via a proxy class. And they use input parameters, some are required, and they return output parameters. There are two ways to get access to DNB APIs. And one is through the Windows Azure Marketplace, which is what I'll be demonstrating today. Also, you can go to DNB Direct, and I'll put those URLs on the slide so you can see how to get there. When working with the API, there are three steps to get it going. The first one is you sign up for access to the API, because of course these are business services and Dun & Bradstreet charges for access to the API. Now, in this particular case, in the Windows Azure Marketplace, there is a trial uh, set of services, so you can try this out for free with a limited number of record, records. You need to look at each API to see how the pricing works, but the one that I'm going to show you, Business Verification, you, ha you can get for free to try out, so trial access. Now, my level of trial is a little bit different than the public because I am a Dun & Bradstreet MVP, and part of that is I get more records uh, to showcase and work with customers and show demos. You can see on the, on the bottom of the page, I put the URL for the current expressed query, which will be important when we call it from the code, and you'll see that at the Windows Azure Marketplace. Um, I do recommend before you write code, you test in the Windows Azure Marketplace, so in the demo, I'm going to show you how to do that first. And then once you're satisfied with the results, then you can code using the proxy class or other tools, depending on the way the methods are exposed, and I'll be showing you that in just a minute. So as we move into the demo, I want to point out that um, I wrote the sample code for the demo, and it's up on GitHub at the URL listed here. So GitHub, WAC Lynn Langit, WAC DNB Business Verification API Sample, and it's in C Sharp. I did remove, of course, my personally identifying information, so you'll have to get your own login and API key in order to make the demo function. So we're going to go ahead and switch to demo. So we're going to start not in code, but we're going to start the Windows Azure Marketplace, which is where 
uh, you want to start to get access to the information you're going to need to program against the endpoint. So the first thing you're going to need to do is to get an account, which is free, and I already have one, so I'll just click Sign In. And now that I'm signed in, I'm just going to click on Data. And you'll see because I'm already subscribed, the DNB Business Verification Service shows up in my list of data. Now, if you're looking for it for the first time, I recommend that you click on See All Publishers and DNB. And then you go ahead and go to the Business Verification. And then you subscribe for the trial um, offer. So my trial is 800 per month, and I've already signed up. Um, if you don't have anything signed up, you'll have to you'll have to uh, sign up first. After you sign up, the next thing that you're going to want to do is take a look at the details. So here you'll notice the service root URI, which you'll need when we're uh, writing code, and then you'll notice the service supports fixed query, and there's a reference on the query types. Here is a calling method, company match by name and address, showing you the two required input parameters and the other optional parameters, and the output parameters. And again, we'll return to these when we're coding. In addition to this, you're going to need a couple more pieces of information to get started coding. You're going to need this c -sharp class library, which is a proxy class that we'll be including in our project. And there's one other piece of information that you're going to need. If you click on Explore this data set, and now you can see some details about business verification. You can see a description that I have a certain number of transactions remaining, and you can see the URL for the current query, and you can actually test it out. So if I just click inside of here, if I click this, this will just populate it. So if I say like Dell, the country code of US, and then I'm going to have to put a state code in, and then it will, it will invoke the company match by name and address when I just click apply. And you can see there's what you can expect to get back, including the completed verified information with the DUNS number, the match grade, and uh, success and status of the transaction. And you can see now I have one less transaction to work with. And the very last thing that you can notice in here, well, a couple of things actually. You could um, work with this in Excel if you wanted to explore more, but you would be, you know, using your record count. But for our purposes, we're going to program using the API. So we're going to need to have this primary account key. And you'll want to copy that because you'll want to have that in your code. You also might want to take a look at the reference guide, which is a data dictionary for the uh, DNB data elements offered through the service. So now we're ready to take a look at the sample code. Um, what I've done is I've created a C Sharp console application and I've added the proxy class, which you can see is called dncontainer.cs. So it's really important you just download this and add it to your project. You have to add a reference to system.data.services.client, but you have to add that reference in order for uh, this sample to, uh, to build based on this proxy class. So you can see that this is um, basically just a wrapper around their data service, and it's um, cleanse match by name address entity is the name of it. And uh, if we just open this up here, you can see it has a number of different properties, and it just exposes this information. This is your very important context. So this is, in essence, your connection to the data service. So your DN container implements system.data.services.client.dataservices service context. And it takes the URI, the service root, and then here it talks about the parameters. And then this is the calling method, the exposed calling method that exposes the service which is a cleanse match by name address entity. So that's your data service query. And here it shows you the parameters uh, that it takes. And that's all there is really to this very simple class. So then of course you'll have your entry point or your main, and that's going to be under program. Now before you go and you work with that, you're going to want to add a new class file. So just right click and uh, say add uh, new class file. And this is going to uh, expose this business service to whatever calls it. Now in our case, it's just a simple console app, but you know, obviously you could use a phone app or a website or you know, whatever type of user interface you want. I just made it simple as possible so you could see how to get the data back through. So this biz data is really kind of the key class here. Um, we start with some constants, which passes in the credentials, but basically it's a user ID, which is your login for the Windows Azure data market, and the secure account key, which is the thing that we copied on the long string from when we browsed the data set. Uh, I'm just passing in a few uh, uh, strings. Uh, normally, obviously, you'd have some sort of like form or something where um, the information would come in. But again, just to show simplest possible in-out, 
we need a business name, we need a country, and there's a list of country codes that DNB has in their data dictionary, and then a state is required for um, businesses in the United States. And then we just have a constructor, so uh, we just pass in the service route uh, URI. We create an instance of the context, so this is uh, sort of your well, this is your data connection, um, and then we pass in the network credentials here, the user ID and the account ID, which is the key and the login for Windows Azure Marketplace. And then uh, once we've created the, the instance, then we expose the calling method, which is we um, call a cleanse match by name address entity. And here I'll just show you the parameters. You can see that this is a um, the name of the company, the street address, the city, the state, the postal code, the country code, the phone number, the minimum confidence. And I'm just passing in the minimum values here, um, just kind of cheating from my, from my um, passing in the strings, basically. And then we're going to return out, after we call this, the completed um, information to list. So this is the expose, this is kind of the key point, the exposing method that says take these things in, and then call the service, go out to the, you know, um, the endpoint, and then return out uh, the results. So how do you call that? That's pretty simple in main. So you basically say, all right, I'm going to uh, have a list of this, and then you want to call this business data, and you want to call the method against it. So this is your basically your data connection, and this is your, your noun and your verb, if you will, um, and then you want to show the input, so I'm just you know passing in the, the values here, and then show the output. So and I just put a little space between them so you could see them. And and really that's all there's to it. It's not the the wrapping is the tricky part. So once you have it, you just call it basically, and then do what you do with the input and the output. So I'll show you how it works. So there's the input. And there's the output. So you can see here's the DUNS number. It completed the um, company name, the address, the city, the state, the country, the zip, uh, the confidence code, uh, 10 is maximum, and the match grade, which has to do with how it matched. And again, this is in the documentation showing like what fields were matched at what level. So this allows you to have greater control over the, the quality of the match. And it's something you really want to investigate because, you know, you're paying for it and you can control it. You can set um, thresholds and, and that kind of stuff. You can tune it, basically. But again, in terms of the pure accessing, the, the, there are three steps, basically. You create this project. You download the DN container. You write this biz data uh, class. And I have a sanitized version of this up on GitHub. And then you simply call it. So I mentioned earlier that when you're working with DNB APIs, you want to pay attention to whether the query is fixed or flexible. So what does that mean? Flexible, uh, you, you can add the service reference from uh, uh, with the URI from the WAM, and the proxy class is generated by the add service reference tool in Visual Studio. So you can right click and say add service reference and just pass in, for example, like a URI in the format that's shown below, but that one is actually fixed. And in that case, the proxy class will be generated by Visual Studio, so you don't have to download it and, and add it to your project. Fixed, which is what I demonstrated here, was a little bit um, less intuitive, and that's actually one of the reasons I made this video, is you download the proxy class once you've subscribed, and then you add it to Visual Studio, you add the reference to system.data.services.client in Visual Studio, and then you write that um, business class that I just demonstrated. And then this shows you um, in um, Windows Azure Marketplace, the details section for the particular offer says whether the query is fixed or flexible. And it just shows you on the screenshot an example of this on the bottom. So um, now that I've shown you a bit about the power of this business verification, it's really up to your imagination as to what you can do with it. Um, you know, I've worked with customers who use it with their salespeople, for example, so that they're talking to a customer and they fill some of the information into a form. They, um, you know, click verify and then it completes the customer information, checks their database to see if they already have a customer um, with that information, again, matching on things like the DUNS number. Um, but there's all kinds of things that you could do with this in terms of having a complete validated um, single version of all your customers. I really don't know a client who doesn't need this. 
Um, it's just how you want to implement it. And there are other ways to do it. See some of my other videos. If, you, if you're not you know, wanting to program against it, there's integration into Excel through an Office app. There's integration into Power Query with the end, endpoint. There's a lot of flexibility in how to use this service, but I wanted to include programming against the API for ultimate flexibility. So this is Lynn Langett for Dun & Bradstreet. Happy programming and have a great day.